So I thought I broke out the Beatitudes. The first part I talked about the brokenness, and then they talked about blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, um, blessed are the meek. And I broke them the way I did because the next ones to me are also a piece of the reflection, but they're, they hold us accountable because they hold up, again, a, a personality, a character, reality, and how we face the world that is completely different than what we would think. They are starting in Matthew 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the last one in that series is, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. What an amazing picture in a world that has taught me that strength is in being physically stronger, strength is in standing up when people come at you, strength is about that position of power. And if we look at many of the great leaders throughout history, not political leaders, but religious leaders, we see again and again this piece of meekness and humbleness and seeking out peace rather than forcing a particular attitude or a particular belief on others. It's amazing to me and it resonates, has always resonated with the Isaiah passage that I love that says that the one that God calls and sends will not even break a bruised reed, which means an almost broken piece of grass or wheat or any of it, that this leader will not be as rough enough to even finish breaking that or to put out a flickering candle. In this passage, it tells us the same thing as this piece of what does it mean to be someone who speaks for God, who lives the way that God is calling us to. It isn't by being that force of strength and power, but of stepping in and with love and care and respect for all of those around to be meek, not to, which means really to not force someone else to accept what you believe and know. And it is a, it's an interesting image because of the preachers that we think about at times are those preachers that stand in the pulpit and shout and there are some examples that I've gotten used to that you're supposed to preach and yell and condemn people until they bow down and give up but Christ didn't do that he is the one that put his life down for us to have life and so he calls us as his followers and those that are living a life in Christ to put our lives down for others. And in addition to that, he calls us to be peacemakers, to, Paul uses the term to be reconcilers, that it's our responsibility not to, again, um, be the ones who win the war, but the ones who broker the peace, the ones who care for both sides in the conversation and to understand that that does indeed put you in the place where you'll be called names. Our teachers are being headed back to school and they've always been heroes who have helped many kids make it through school and rallied and put their extra time and effort in and yet they have often been the ones who have been blamed for a child's behavior or lack of ability to prosper. Our call as Christians is to be the person who cares about so both sides, the parents and the teacher, the child and the teacher. As a Christian, our call into that situation is very much to see both as just as valuable, our child and their teacher. 
And so as we think about those ways of how do we become a peacemaker in our world today, we have lots of conflict as we have these conversations about racism and how it plays out and how it's experienced and felt. The most difficult part about that in so many cases is that experience different by different people um, for various reasons, age, um, gender, color of their skin, places where they grew up, all of those kinds of things. When we think about what does it mean to be a Christian in that scenario, in the teachers and kids scenario, in our community about policing, and all of it is to care for each, that it isn't a one side or the other that should win. As peacemakers, we're called to make sure both sides win and are cared for and respected. It's a tough place to be, to be meek, um, to sit in when somebody's bashing your head in with a club, to allow yourself to be put in jail as Gandhi did, to quietly take on the task of caring for people as Mother Teresa did. Um, all of those places where people have just, not by force or some great power, except for just care and love for someone else, have walked through their lives. And as a person who was taught that strength was John Wayne and Chuck Norris blowing things up, um, it is not a natural attitude that comes to me, but I see more and more how for Christ and for God, our call is not to be the one who comes in and tears everything down. Our role as believers is to trust in God's power and to quietly and meekly and with care and love for all find the way through that allows for everyone to be winners. And it's in that while we may not in our lifetime, how many of these great leaders have been seen that way, be a hero, but that in God's eyes, we will indeed be blessed because we are living it out in his image, not in the image of the world. So I hope you can think about, and look back at these Beatitudes and think how can you feel blessed in those places? What does it mean to experience God's presence in a way that allows you to be a peacemaker, even if you feel strongly about one side or the other? How does it call you to live today in the circumstances that come your way in a way that doesn't put out that dim wick or extinguish or break the piece of grass in a situation where in truth if we open our eyes all of our neighbors are feeling broken and scared and uncertain so how do we become the people who quietly help bring peace and hope into the world will you pray with me holy god in your graciousness, you have indeed taken on the place to win the war, to bring the victory. And you only ask of us, O oh God, to walk with you and bring peace. Ask in Jesus' name that our lives are a reflection of you. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you.